In this video, we're going to uncover more on how new pilots in EVE Online can jump into Abyssal Dead Space as quickly and safely as possible. My goal is to show you that the Abyss is as basic of an income source as mining and mission running, even for players who don't have a 1 million skill point referral code. Today we'll be taking a look at the Catalyst, which is a destroyer belonging to the Galente faction. The information I'm covering can be useful to other ships and factions, but I'm keeping it specific and looking at just the Catalyst. Let's start with the required skills. For my build, you're going to need to train the following. Galente Frigate from level 1 to level 3, which will allow us to train Galente Destroyer to level 1. Then the only other skill we need is Repair Systems 1 to equip an Armor Repair Module. In total, this amounts to a little over 18 hours of training, which will give us ample time to learn how to play the game by running the Career Agent missions. Veteran players know that the Career Agents are a great way for new players to get started. Not only will you learn about Approach, Orbit, and Keep Distance, which are the only movement commands you need to know to pilot this ship, but you'll also receive about 10 million ISK in cash, and if you're part of the Galente faction, you'll get a free Catalyst Destroyer, which is exactly what we're looking for. So once you've completed those career agents and your training is making headway, we need to know what modules to buy. I've tested various fits over 150 runs, and I've found that this build best addresses the things a new Catalyst pilot needs. For our high slots, we have 8 turret hardpoints, so we'll be fitting 8 125mm compressed coil gun 1s. This is the second most powerful variant of the 125mm railguns. If you watched my previous video, you'll know that I recommend getting the most powerful meta variant you can afford, and I still do, because once you get started, you'll be earning enough money to pay off the entire ship many times over. However, looking at the market now, I've noticed that the fits have gotten more expensive overall. As of making this video, the 125mm prototype Goss gun toes the line of being a little too expensive for players who just finished the career agents. So, we'll be losing about 6 damage per second and a couple other things, but in exchange we stand to save 2 to 4 million isk on our first chip, depending on where we buy the modules. I've tested extensively using the Meta 4 guns and they still work great. You can upgrade to the Gauss guns once you've earned enough money. For our ammo, we'll be using Plutonium and Antimatter Charge S. Antimatter does the most damage, whereas Plutonium does the second most but has slightly longer range, which is critical for certain encounters. Our ship uses up to 1200 shots per run, so keep that in mind when deciding how much to purchase. It doesn't hurt to keep other ammo types on your ship, but I found that they're not strictly necessary. In our mid slots, we're going to fit a 1 Mega Newton monopropellant enduring afterburner, which will allow us to move a little over 500 meters per second. In our second mid slot, we'll fit a small compact lead acid cap battery. This gives us a larger capacitor. In our low slots, we'll be fitting two Vortex Compact Magnetic Field Stabilizers. These significantly increase both the damage and firing rate of each of our guns. For our defenses, we'll be equipping one small IA Enduring Armor Repairer 1 module to our remaining low slot. Destroyers don't really have enough resources to comfortably fit more than one of these, so we can't rely on our defenses to keep us safe. As you'll see with most destroyers, our plan is to destroy them before they can destroy us. For our rigs, we're going to equip two small capacitor control circuit ones. This speeds up our capacitor's recharge time and stabilizes the energy output to a healthy level. For our last rig, we'll fit a small EM armor reinforcer one. This one may come as a surprise because 30 seconds ago I just said we won't be relying on our defenses. However, from experience I've come to understand that the two most difficult encounters for the Catalyst are the Skybreaker and Devoted Hunter, which both deal primarily EM damage and break through our armor quite regularly without it. So with that in mind, this rig will allow us to make it through even the two most difficult encounters relatively unscathed. So now that we have our build, let's talk battle strategy and go over specific encounters. The Catalyst will fare best in the Tranquil Firestorm Filament. The Firestorm filaments will increase our armor by 50% and reduce thermal resistances across the board. Because our defenses are armor based and a good portion of our damage is thermal, both effects work very well in our favor. Most enemies in the Abyss are handled very easily by this build and are completely self-explanatory, however there are a few specific encounters that you may need to watch out for when piloting a Catalyst. 
The FELT's Lancer is the only cruiser you'll see in T0 Abyss. It has a very wide orbit of about 12, 10 to 12 kilometers. This would be a good enemy to switch to your plutonium charged S ammo for to apply better damage. The Villa Damovic and Striking Villa Damovic are enemies that spawn with extremely fast moving drones. Ignore the Villa Swarmers and attack the Damovic. Once the Damovic is destroyed, the Villa Swarmers will also stop attacking. Other than that, this is a straightforward and easy fight. Teslas, like Spark Needle Tesla or Strike Needle Tesla, are often considered one of the weakest enemies in the Abyss, but they shine a light on one of the weaknesses of this build. These enemies move very fast and orbit out of short range, about 4 kilometers. This makes them very hard to hit if you do not have good tracking. At minimum skills, our guns will have 107 tracking speed, which is not great and you'll notice that the damage you deal to Teslas is inconsistent. I've tested builds that raise tracking speed to the 120 to 133 range, but concluded that to increase tracking it's better to simply level up your skills. Destroyers have too few module slots to be tinkering around with things like tracking speed, and the faster moving enemies are usually not the deadly ones. So, to get around this tracking speed issue, we're going to orbit the biocombinative cache at around 2.5 kilometers instead of approaching it. Orbiting will keep us in motion, and I've found that it helps create some distance to get a clean shot on the Teslas. The Devoted Hunter is a long-range sniper that shoots fast and hits hard. It has a lot of shield HP but low armor and hull, so don't be afraid when you see you've only gotten through its shields when it's already halfway through your armor. It has much better tracking and range than this Catalyst build, so orbiting doesn't really help. I found it it's best just to keep distance at around 5 to 8 kilometers and slug it out in a fair fight. And finally, the Skybreaker. In my previous video in which I covered the Coercer, I said the best way to defeat the Skybreaker is to shoot it from 20 kilometers away. Although this is a safe range to hit it from, unfortunately, during playtests, I discovered this strategy does not work for the Catalyst in the same way it does for the Coercer. I don't want to get bogged down with math, but I will briefly note two contributing factors. The first is that our 20 km damage output is noticeably lower than the Coercer in the previous video, and that's just inherent in the weapons. Also, the Skybreaker happens to have much more powerful resistance to kinetic damage. With those combined, the Catalyst does not have enough damage to even begin breaking the Skybreaker's shields right now. Our only option then is to beat it with Plan A, destroy it before it destroys us. Before we move or do anything, we'll first take some time to load up our guns with Plutonium Charge S and heal any damage we may have sustained from the previous room. Second, we'll activate our Afterburner and approach the Skybreaker directly. Third, when the Skybreaker gets within 19 kilometers of us, we'll activate our Armor Repair Module and our turrets. We're using Plutonium Charge S instead of Antimatter here because our Afterburner only makes our speed about equal to the Skybreaker's. So for most of the fight, we'll be shooting at about 12 to 13 kilometers distance. Make sure all your modules are cycling. We need all of them for this to work. The build I'm sharing with you has very good capacitor stability, so we should be able to keep this up without any issues until the Skybreaker is destroyed. If you can make it through its shield, that's a very good sign, as the shield is its largest health pool. I've tested runs in other filaments and using minimum skills, the only other time I survived the Skybreaker room was in Exotic Filament. However, in Exotic, I was brought down to half my structure health from not having any bonus armor, so be cautious. Again, I'm only recommending Firestorm Filament for new players. And that just about wraps it up. Break open the cache in each room, jump through each gate, gather up all your surveys, and find a conquered station that buys them for a 100,000 isk apiece and sell everything else you don't want to keep. A typical run will take you roughly 7 minutes. For destroyers, each run will net you about 1.4 million isk on average. So as the math works out, on day 1 you can earn about 9 million isk per hour if you're lucky and run it diligently, or 6 to 7 million isk per hour if you're running it at a more leisurely pace. Either way, the Abyss is a whole lot of fun and a great way to earn steady income. I appreciate those of you who've watched this far into the video. Please let me know what you liked or didn't like by leaving a comment below. I read everyone and it helps me to understand how I should make my videos in the future. Thanks.